you know the scene in the goodwill hunting the it's not your fault it's not your fault it's not your fault one now let me do a version of that why are you working so much no seriously why are you working so much why if you look at the larger picture it seems like we act like mindless cogs in a machine and we do not know why we do that we created a society in which we work for the abstract good of the collective without realizing that we are suffering on an individual level of course the staggering inequality of income is one of the main causes and it seems like no one is bothered by that enough to actually do something significant but we will leave that for some other time if you have read Sap sapiens from harari for example you would have noticed that he is one of the many that see that agricultural revolution that started around 10,000 years ago uh, was one of the not so great things that happened to us for our psychology at least but since but since there are seven billion people on the planet and not seven million anymore we are stuck with the system we created there is no way back but there might be a smarter way forward what we did then is we started to settle and then we started to come up with all this technology that should make our lives easier but for everything that we invented that halved our effort we doubled our desires for something new that made us work and suffer even more so harari says one of history's few iron laws is that luxuries tend to become necessities and to spawn new obligations so once people get used to a certain luxury they just take it for granted now i'll take this idea and bring it down to the trenches and connect it to the building industry here is why there is something wrong with our way of thinking and acting uh, of making luxury become a necessity that spawns new obligations Imagine a building, something complicated. I always use that overused example of Sagrada Familia, but think of something like that. And let's say that for your object it took 20 years to build at the end of the 19th century. You have architects and engineers and workers working 8 hours per day and after 20 years you have your house. Today let's say we can build that object in 3 years or less, with architects and engineers and workers working 8 hours per day. Now, why can we do that faster? Because we develop the means of automation. We have machines, computers, and recently we have been developing such an amazing palette of software that can automate anything from the design process to the fabrication process. And we are developing large scale 3D printers that are already printing entire houses. So what do we humans do? Do we reduce a working week to two days? Do we tell those architects and engineers Listen, we humans with the capabilities of our prefrontal cortex have invented these machines to make our life easier. Rejoice, you do not have to work eight hours a day now. You can work two or three and we can build this building in five years instead of 20. Hell no, we say five years is too much, even three is too much. Let's try to work 12 hours a day, work seven days a week and let's try to finish this in two years. Why? Because we are in the global competitive market. So if we do not do it, somebody else can and will and they will put us out of business so that becomes the new standard and after a while we will try to do it in one year six months push 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 work 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 it is how it is again it's an inevitable consequence of the free competitive market because if you offer five years and someone else offers three years you will be out of business within 20 minutes but let's continue How about precision? Can you imagine building the George Washington Bridge and cutting every tile so that it fits within a tenth of a millimeter? Of course not. Back then you had a lot of tolerance, few centimeters here or there, but it all worked. And if you're doing a heart surgery, every micrometer counts. But if you're building a skyscraper, you can afford to tolerate even centimeter large errors. Now I worked recently on the Foster's new airport in Kuwait, and as it is the case, with other airports I worked on, every single element had to be defined precisely within a tolerance smaller than one millimeter. And we went up to one thousandth of a millimeter very often. And we are talking about a roof structure kilometers long, kilometers, with hundreds of thousands of elements, millions and millions of screws and bolts. Did we say maybe in an airport with a roof span of 80 meters, I do not think that an error of five or 10 millimeters will actually hurt the structure. No, we don't say that. Might be the case, but we don't do that. The precision that computer gave us, uh, gave us made us addicted to it. The luxury became a necessity. 
We invest hours and hours doing and redoing everything so that every connection fits into a tenth of a millimeter. And that's nice if it does, it's great. But at what costs? Once you have meetings and meetings and you have to redo your model constantly because some architect maybe somewhere wanted their opinion to matter so they think that the facade should go 35 millimeters over the column and not 32 and that everyone should update that in their models. This creates a loop of sometimes ridiculous alterations. It's like we do not want to work less. It's like we accepted that we have to work 12 hours per day and we will fill that up with any junk idea we have just to make our lives difficult. And that's a known thing actually. It's called the Parkinson's law. Google it if you don't believe me. All architects follow this law as most people do. And it says that uh, the work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. If you give us five years for the airport, if someone somewhere somehow estimated that time span, even though we could maybe finish it in two, we can fight about five millimeters here and there for a year if we need to in order to fill up this time because we know we have it and eventually finish the airport in six, seven years. So how long do you think you're going to live? 200 years? 250? How much time per day do you dedicate to yourself and your family? Do you know how much time your predecessors did 20,000 years ago? Much more than you. They worked much less than you and spent much more time with their loved ones. It feels like we tear down buildings and build them again just so we have no time to enjoy life. Did you ever think about why the weekend is not three days? Can you give me an objective argument? Why isn't it four days? Why, why did we accept this arbitrary two five day division that balances it out? Why do you accept to work eight, nine, ten hours a day as an architect when we have developed all this automation? People hundred years ago thought that the machines will do everything for us and that the working hours will radially drop. It was a normal prediction to six, five, four hours a day. Instead, they increased. How is that possible? Who's, whose fault is that? Now, if you have been listening carefully, you will notice there is an obvious contradiction in my arguments and in the state of things. On one hand, automation allows us to build faster and I argue we should relax and let the machines do the work while we are having coffee and the interesting discussions. But on the other hand, I claim we are wasting time with ridiculous things. And there I argue we should be even faster. No reason to spend one year on building a house when we can print it in 24 hours. Let's be more efficient. So, I do contradict myself in these two arguments. And as we established, we live in a free market economy where if everybody can print a house in 24 hours and you decide you need a year to complete yours and simply take 364 days off, your comp competition will annihilate you. So, if the system is capitalism, free market economy, is there a way to use automation to free us and not to enslave us? So, do I have a solution for this? Well, I do. But it is the simplest, most common sense solution you can think of. The one everyone knows and the one that every entity on the free market is trying to implement. Be better than the competition. Provide, provide more in less time or for less money or ideally both. That's it. The meaning of life is love, happiness is the ultimate goal and the solution for free market is, well, be better than the competition. So the solution is to use the mechanism of the very free market we are bound to at the moment. It is an unfortunate solution and cannot work on, global, on a global scale, only for the small percentage of people, but the only one I see at the moment. Architecture is one of the most conservative professions out there. I used to roll my eyes at the beginning of 2000s when people considered switching to 3D. And although we progressed since then, we did not progress so far. At the same time, we live in a world where everyone is bragging about how much they are working. 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week, 100 hour weeks. If you want to make it in this industry, be prepared to work at least 12 hours a day. You heard that many times. Elon Musk sleeping underneath his desk. But at the end, we all know it's not about hours. It's about efficiency. Now listen to me, we are going to optimize and we are going to take work from architectural offices that do not care about efficiency. With the use of right software, with automation in the design process and the automation in the production process, we can do any project in 30% of the time that the larger or more conservative office needs. 
and we will say we need 50% of the time, which will make the developers be happy and we will still be able to work normally and enjoy our lives properly. And I'm not talking empty here, I'm talking from experience. Using automation, programming, proper software, we will be, able, uh, we will be on the path of eliminating all boring and repetitive work. That's how we will get rid of senseless drafting. That's how we will get rid of endless meetings. And if you're a steel production company that needs old-fashioned 2D drawings, well, sorry, we'll find a new one that will take automatically generated CNC files from us. Using automation, we can always be one step ahead in front of conservative offices. When they get to the level of automation, of automation we have now, then we will be employing artificial intelligence for the design. And so the game will continue. So we don't beat the game, we can't beat the game at the moment. We just try to get ahead of the game by being three times more effective than the rest and do the same job for half of the cost. The textbook way to progress in the free market, offer more for less money. So I just reinvented the wheel right there. But we have to learn how to create progress and learn how to live at the same time. That's the twist, the trick, the catch 22 and the only way forward. This is easier said than done, but it comes down to you choosing to be on the conservative majority boat or at the for forefront of automation. In every population, at any stage in history, there was this division and it was true by default. In being in the conservative boat is comfortable with not a lot of unknowns, that's why the majority is there. On the other side is risk. And I'm not going to lie to you, we all might take a shot and miss. I missed many times and I always risk to be out of work next year. The automation techniques we develop might not be effective, they might not be needed, we might fail, we might end up working much more for much less than the people on the comfortable boat. That happened to me many times, but we have a chance at living a freer and more exciting life as well. Of course, if you belong to this group of people that innovates and automates and can do something for 30% of the time, and you decide to work 16 hours a day and be even more effective, perpetuate the competition mantra, no one can and should stop you. But my hope is that beside being able to utilize smart work and not hard work, the future generations will learn how to stop and smell the flowers as well. As Harari says, we thought we were saving time. Instead, we revved up the treadmill of life to 10 times its former speed and made our days more anxious and agita agitated. But that is a long discussion for some other occasion. Please subscribe if you want to know when new videos are coming up. Share, support, and let's get to work.